Vancouver Point Grey. The Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, the Premier, in a mandate letter, quote, decided to place responsibility for TransLink with the Ministry of Community, Sport and Cultural Development. So I asked the Minister for TransLink questions during estimates. I asked about the total compensation for the TransLink board, and he said, quote, I don't have the facts on compensation. I asked if he could answer questions about bus service levels. He said, quote, no. I asked why the $50 million handy dart contract seemed to suggest the contractor wasn't providing the number of bus hours they committed to. He said, quote, I don't have the detail in terms of a breakdown. The minister couldn't answer questions about audits of TransLink, about transit police, about spending on the transit referendum. He didn't even know what the ridership numbers were for TransLink. Honourable Speaker, the minister gets an extra $51,439 to be the minister for TransLink. That's not free money, Honourable Speaker. He's expected to do his job. Can the minister tell this House why he should be able to keep that money when he doesn't know the first thing about his job? Yeah. Minister for Community, Sport and Cultural Development. <laughs> Well, Madam Speaker, in estimates, the uh, member was leaping all over the place. And, and, and Madam Speaker, there was, and truly, Madam Speaker, most of it was a leap backwards, as, as is exemplified by the member's office at uh, fiscal policy. But let me say this. Very clearly, I said to the member, my job is not to manage TransLink. My job is to ensure that the money that the province of British Columbia invests is being well spent. Members will come to order. Vancouver Point Grey. And Madam Speaker, I made it clear to the member that my expectation, the government's expectation, is to ensure that the Mayor's Council, the board that they appoint, and the management of TransLink look after those details, and I have the confidence that they are doing that. Thank you for Point Grey on a supplemental. Honourable Speaker, let's talk about the Minister's expectations. So the TransLink Fairgate project is supposed to be finished in 2008 for 80 to $100 million, delivered two weeks ago, eight years late, double that original estimate. Where's the fair gate spending now? I asked the minister, quote, I don't know where the budget stands. <laughs> Will the minister demand a report from TransLink about why the project was eight years late and tens of millions of dollars over budget? Quote, I have no expectation to demand anything oh. of TransLink. Oh. I have no expectation wow. to demand anything of TransLink, honorable speaker. Now the media reports, <laughs> now the media reports that anyone with a smartphone can reprogram compass cards to ride for free. The transportation critic in 2012 told the government about this, told TransLink about it. They had three years to fix it. They didn't fix it. So with disasters like this and a minister who knows nothing, can the Premier explain why this person is still the minister for TransLink? Minister for Community, Sport and Cultural Development. <laughs> You know what, Madam Speaker, I find it uh, very interesting that the members opposite, who constantly are trying to find what's wrong, do not focus on what's right. And Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, what is... Members, this House will come to order. What is clear, Madam Speaker, the very same members who criticized TransLink for fair evasion are now criticizing them because the fair gates are working, because the public is seeing that it is a good system, that they feel safe on the system, and Madam Speaker, fair evasion is going away. And yes, Madam Speaker, there are always challenges with technology, but TransLink is committed to making sure they deal with those issues, and I again have the confidence 
that the operational aspects of TransLink will be looked after.